Picture this. It's the late 90s and a young rapper with a voice that's gruff yet smooth catches your attention. The rhymes are catchy and his swagger can't be ignored. He's got an energy that makes you wonder, who's this guy and where'd he come from? He'd go through the wild highs and embarrassing lows, all in the public eye. But that's just life in the fast lane for a young man named Ja Rule. From the beginning of Ja's journey, music was in his blood. His first shot was as part of the hip-hop group Cash Money Click. This experience laid the groundwork for what would become an impressive solo career. In 1999, Ja Rule gambled on himself and released his debut album, Veni Vedi Vici. The album was an instant hit, climbing to the top of the Billboard 200 chart. With songs like Hala Hala, Ja Rule caught the attention of fans in the music industry and became a household name. This success paved the way for the formation of Murder Inc. Records, founded by Ja Rule, Irv Gotti, and Chris Gotti. The label became a powerhouse in the hip-hop scene, especially in the early 2000s. Ja Rule's collab with other artists were part of the label's rinse and repeat formula. Working with the likes of Ashanti, Jennifer Lopez, Christina Milian, and others, Ja Rule would deliver hit after hit after hit. Songs like Always On Time, I'm Real, and Every Little Thing That We Do took over the airwaves and found a special place in the hearts of millions of fans. The collabs showed Ja Rule's versatility, whether he was rapping, singing, or a mix of both. The impact of murdering records and his artists was massive, and it solidified Ja Rule's status as one of the biggest stars in the hip-hop scene. But as Ja was enjoying his success, conflict started brewing that would ultimately take him down a few notches. Starting in 2003, two giants of the rap industry, 50 Cent and Eminem, engaged in feuds with Ja Rule and his entire label. These feuds played out publicly through diss tracks, interviews, concerts, and even award shows. The origin of the Ja Rule 50 Cent beef can be traced back to well before either of them ever made a name for themselves in the rap game. In 2003, the hostility between Ja Rule and 50 Cent went public, with both rappers attacking each other through their music. We went down with that cat 50 Cent. We went down with that. Who? That cat 50 Cent. <laughs> Who? <laughs> I don't know him. You know what I'm saying? 50 Cent's Wankstar was followed by Ja Rule's Loose Change, which would pull Eminem into the mix after he name-dropped his daughter. The effects of the feud were long-lasting. Ja Rule's reputation took a hit, as did his album sales. He found himself overshadowed by 50 Cent, whose career soared in the wake of their beef. Later that same year, Ja Rule's world was rocked when he, along with Irv and Chris Gotti, became the target of a federal investigation. They were being accused of laundering money for a notorious drug dealer through their record label Murder Inc. Records. Eventually, the Gotti brothers and Ja Rule were all ultimately acquitted, but the scandal damaged their credibility and marked the beginning of a downward spiral for them. The troubles continued to pile up for Ja Rule. In 2007, he was arrested on weapons charges following a concert in Manhattan. Four years later, in 2011, he was sentenced to prison for both illegal possession of a firearm and tax evasion. The rapper found himself at rock bottom, with his career and personal life in shambles. During during Ja Rule's lockup, his absence from the rap scene meant that newer artists could step up, leading to a shift in the industry's landscape. Despite the turmoil, Ja Rule was determined to bounce back. While serving his prison sentence, he released his seventh studio album, Pain Is Love 2. The album, however, ended up being a flop and it was clear his time in the spotlight was gone. In 2013, after serving most of his sentence, Ja Rule was released from prison. The world he had left behind had changed and climbing the ladder back to the top would be tough. Unknown to him, one of the most infamous events of his career was just around the corner. In an unexpected turn of events, Ja Rule found himself involved in the ill-fated Fire Festival. I am co-founder of Fire. Me and my me and my brother Billy. And this is what we call a moonshot. <laughs> which promised to be a luxurious, exclusive music event on a private island in the Bahamas. Teaming up with Billy McFarlane, Ja Rule co-founded Fire Media, the company behind the festival. And together, they started promoting the event, building hype through social media, leveraging influencers, celebrities, and models. As the festival got closer, the cracks started to show. Rumors were going around that organizers couldn't put the necessary infrastructure in place. But despite these warning signs, the festival went ahead, resulting in chaos as attendees arrived to an unfinished site, almost no accommodation Recommendations and a severe lack of food and water. Oh no! Turn this 
Right around. Concert goers stranded with little to eat and just tends to sleep. You're stranded. I am stranded in the Bahamas. Plain cheese sandwiches and salad after the chef backed out. The fire festival is an absolute circus. The fire festival devolved into a disaster as the promise of a glamorous, unforgettable experience gave way to the harsh reality that everyone involved was scammed. People who had spent thousands of dollars to attend were stranded in a chaotic mess while artists slated to perform started pulling out of the event. The disaster didn't just affect the festival goers, it impacted Ja Rule's reputation as well. All ticket holders will receive a full refund and a VIP ticket to next year's fire fire. Next year. <laughs> they decide to get really? Exactly. Next year. He faced a barrage of backlash with critics questioning his involvement and accusing him of misleading the public. Jaw found himself at the center of one of the most disastrous events in music history. Although he tried to distance himself from the debacle by claiming he was also a victim of the fraud perpetrated by his business partner, Billy McFarlane, the damage to his reputation was already done. Rules yeah. Festival! <laughs> they're trying to blame somebody! <laughs> Hold up! <laughs> Lawsuits were being thrown in every direction, from Ja Rule to McFarland and any of their associates, with claimants seeking millions of dollars in damages. Luckily for Ja Rule, he was ultimately cleared of wrongdoing in a class action lawsuit. McFarland was not so lucky. In October 2018, McFarland was sentenced to six years in prison on multiple counts of fraud related to the fire festival. As the dust started to settle, a bunch of documentaries detailing the Fire Festival fiasco were produced, each one of them highlighting Ja Rule's involvement. These documentaries shed light on the behind the scenes mismanagement and deception that had taken place. Even after all this though, Ja Rule kept pushing his efforts to regain his prominence. He even went so far as to form a new record label and release a new album, hoping to re-establish himself as a major player in the hip hop world. But the lasting impact of the Fire Festival will continue to haunt his career. For Ja Rule, the repercussions went beyond the immediate backlash and lawsuits. The event had lasting effects on his public image, with people questioning his judgment, his integrity, and his credibility. The Fire Festival fiasco would remain a black mark on Ja Rule's career, casting a long shadow over his attempts to rebuild and move forward. In 2019, Ja Rule released Coup de Gras an album that he had hoped would mark a turning point in his career. Unfortunately, the album didn't make an impact and didn't bring him the resurgence he was looking for. The lackluster reception was just another hurdle in his attempt to bounce back from the Fire Festival debacle and re-establish himself as a force. Since music wasn't working, Ja Rule tried to expand through reality TV and documentaries. He appeared on shows like Growing Up Hip Hop New York and Celebrity Show Up as well as featuring in documentary Unravel that talked about the rise and fall of Murder Inc. records. Even though they kept him in the public eye, it did nothing to help his image. Instead, it just showed the challenges he faced moving forward. Ja Rule's journey, once marked by chart-topping hits and collaborations with famous artists, had taken a clear downward turn, leading him to becoming an internet meme and a target for ridicule. One of his biggest tormentors was none other than social media's ultimate troll, 50 Cent. As Ja Rule's career went downhill, 50 Cent's career continued to rise. He not only enjoyed success in the music industry, but also expanded his influence in business, television, and film. The animosity between the two rappers never really went away, and every time Ja hit a setback, 50 was there to publicly mock him. Using Instagram as his main platform, 50 regularly made fun of Ja Rule, usually referencing the Fire Festival disaster and the rapper's legal trouble, or even the time 50 bought out 200 front row tickets at $15 each off of Groupon just to keep them empty. Ja's past antics and along with the constant ridicule from 50 would make sure that Ja Rule would never be anything more than a laughingstock to the fans.